Until Bruce Willis's family announced that he had frontal temporal dementia in February of last year, you may not have ever heard of frontal temporal dementia or primary progressive aphasia. Frontal temporal dementia is a form of dementia that has the first symptoms of being issues with changes in the person's behavior or their language skills. In February of this year, a second celebrity, broadcaster Wendy Williams, announced her diagnosis. Tune in for this week's episode of This is Getting Old to learn how frontal temporal dementia is different from other dementias, how it's diagnosed, and learn about a resource to help you if you or a loved one is dealing with this diagnosis. Welcome to This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Dr. Melissa Batchelor, and I am a nurse and a nurse practitioner, and I've been caring for older adults and their families for over 25 years now. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to share a few different ways that you can connect with me. First, you can subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already done that um, or from whatever uh, platform you're joining me from today. And if you like the episode, um, please leave a comment or share it with someone that it might be beneficial for. You can also go to my website, melissabphd.com and sign up to be a part of my weekly newsletter to get the latest news and information about courses I'm developing, as well as join HYSU. Um, it's a new membership site where I'm sorting all of my podcasts by topic and will be a lot easier for you to find um, some of the content that I've done over the past four years. And you can also join my Facebook group and it's titled after the podcast called This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. So on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about frontotemporal dementia. And just like in other episodes, um, frontal temporal dementia is just one type of dementia. We've talked about the term dementia being a broad umbrella term. Um, Alzheimer's disease is the most common type, and frontal temporal dementia is another type under that same umbrella. Um, and basically, all dementias don't look the same, so they don't they don't show up the same way that Alzheimer's disease does. So when there is a problem, either with someone's ability to use and understand language, or there's a change in that person's um, personality or behavior, and those changes are interfering with that person's life, meaning they're keeping them from doing the things that they want to do or spending time with the people that they love, and that's when it's really time to seek medical care. So frontal temporal dementia also affects people at a younger age. So you know, this typically will happen to a person who's between 45 and 64, and it's one of the more rare types of dementia. So with Alzheimer's disease, you know, we have about 6.5 million Americans over the age of 65 who are living with Alzheimer's. Only 3% of those people, so like 50 to 60,000 people, have frontal temporal dementia or FTD. And the way that it's different from Alzheimer's disease is that a person with um, frontal temporal dementia, they are not going to experience the memory loss and the early stages that typically happen for someone who would seek treatment um, for Alzheimer's disease. The early symptoms of FTD are typically a dramatic change in the person's personality or behavior. And this can range from the person being very withdrawn or apathetic. And when I say the word apathetic or apathy, that just means when the person no longer finds enjoyment doing things they used to do before. Um, but typically behavior changes like that are often really subtle and they don't really get our attention right away because it's hard to know if something's going on or if anything's wrong. Um, and But when you compare that to a dramatic behavioral change where the person is showing more disinhibited behaviors, like acting out of character, um, maybe having an affair, overspending their money, or they no longer have empathy or they're you know, acting very impulsively. Those types of behaviors tend to get people's attention. But you're still probably not going to think that that person has dementia. We may think they're either depressed or maybe they're just being ornery or they have some type of psychiatric disorder going on. Um, and that also happens because the person's younger. So um, trying to get over age bias here. Um, but it can be passed off in the beginning stages as something as simple as a midlife crisis. But again, we're looking for dramatic behavior changes from that person's norm. Another major difference with frontotemporal dementia compared to Alzheimer's disease is that along with the behavioral changes, one of the first signs of difficulty is when a person begins to have trouble using and understand language. And this is why when Bruce Willis is condition first hit the news, the diagnosis given was aphasia. Um, a year later, in February of 2024, um, Wendy Williams' care team has come forward and said that she also has primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia. So Wendy Williams is only 59. 
Um, but starting as far back as 2017, people were concerned about her well-being. Her symptoms included trouble processing information, losing her words, acting erratically at times, and having difficulty understanding financial transactions. And again, all of those things are happening at the point to where they're interfering with her ability to live her life. So how is it diagnosed? Well, just like with other forms of dementia, getting to a diagnosis can be very challenging because the symptoms can progress very slowly and they can look like other disorders. And another barrier um, to getting a diagnosis um, is that frontotemporal dementia is not typically very well known compared to the other types of dementia. So there's no guarantee that even if you're seen by a primary care provider, that they're going to be able to recognize it and kind of start the testing that needs to be done. It's even challenging for a large medical center to recognize it and get people started on a path to early diagnosis with this type of dementia. So it could take up to two to three years to go through all of the necessary appointments, get the proper referrals, go through the testing and rule out all other potential conditions that are reversible and meet with an expert in neurology who can properly diagnose your condition. And that's just because there's not a diagnostic test that's going to say, whether this is frontal temporal dementia or Alzheimer's dementia, Alzheimer's dementia, typically a lot of time has to go by so that the provider can kind of match your test results and the symptoms that you're exhibiting to come up with this diagnosis of exclusion. In Bruce Willis's case, it took about a year for them to diagnose him. And like I said, he was initially believed to have aphasia. Um, which is a disorder that can also happen after someone has had a stroke or a head injury. And it basically first impacts that person's um, life by losing their ability to use and understand language. So is there a cure? Well, just like with all of the forms of dementia, unfortunately, there is not, there's still not a cure. But treatment for frontotemporal dementia is similar in the fact that the person and their family should seek support and the therapies that are going to help ease or manage the symptoms that you're experiencing. So this could range from anything like an antidepressant or an antipsychotic for managing the behavioral changes or occupational um, speech and language therapies. A lot of people diagnosed with aphasia and frontotemporal dementia face a lot of misunderstanding and stigma just because they're showing changes in their behavior and their thinking, but they haven't been diagnosed yet. And again, it's a slow progressive change over time. So sometimes it's easier to chalk it up to that. Like I said before, the person is just, you know, off the handle. I don't know what their problem is, but, and that's really just because this, there's this lack of awareness about FTD and the symptoms that would lead a person or the people in their life to encourage them to be evaluated and get started with being tested and in turn get that earlier diagnosis. And you might say, well, I mean, a lot of people do, I think, put off getting the testing because they don't want to actually get the diagnosis. But an earlier diagnosis really just gives you and your family more time to adjust to what's going on. And it allows the people around that person to have more empathy when they're dealing with a person living with this disease because frontal temporal dementia is still a dementia, which means the person living with that disease is doing the best that they can. As And as the people in their life, we have to adjust our care to them. So the biggest thing too about an early diagnosis is it helps all of you get connected to the support, to the care and the resources that are going to be needed to help that person. So speaking of resources, um, if you're looking for guidance following a diagnosis or you want to find out more information about this form of dementia, one good resource is the Association for Frontotemporal Degeneration. So this organization can help people living with the disease or their families um, or caregivers and help them get connected to in-person and online support groups. So the website is the AFTD, which stands for the Association for Frontotemporal Dementia. So the AFTD.org, and they also have a helpline, and the helpline phone number is 866-507-7222, or you can email them at info at the AFTD.org. So you can check out my other episode about Dementia 101, where I briefly go over the most common types of dementia. Um, they're also on my website, melissabphd.com. And you can find more information about how dementia is diagnosed, as well as other resources, if you or someone you love is concerned about your memory. So thank you for listening today, and I hope this has been helpful information for you. 
Please don't forget to um, support the podcast by subscribing to whatever channel you're listening on today. If you like the episode, please like it, leave a comment, or share it with someone that you think it might be beneficial for. You can also go to my website, melissabphd.com, and sign up for my weekly newsletter so that you will get the news and the updates, especially about the HYSU library that I'll be launching in March. So just a couple of weeks. Very excited. And be sure to join the Facebook group for the podcast called This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. And I will look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for joining me today.